Hello and welcome back. Before I begin, I'd like to give a big thank you to Sally Farr for, become, for becoming my latest subscriber. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And this time around, I was fortunate enough to get two films from the McNaughton Popular Viewing Collection of the Hopkins University Library. Or, not that fortunate, as you will find out, but I was looking forward to seeing them anyway. First, I got Fair Game, starring Naomi Watts and Sean Penn. This is based on the true story of Valerie Plain, the CIA agent who was outed by um, members of the Bush administration and her husband, Joe Wilson. This was really, I mean, it's called Fair Game, and I would rate it as just fair. I mean, it was okay, but I really didn't find it that interesting. And then I was really looking forward to this one. This is Somewhere, which was the new film from Sofia Coppola, who did a couple of great films, The Virgin Suicides and Lost in Translation. And The Virgin Suicides was actually one of those rare films that I thought was better than the book on which it was based. And uh, then she did Marie Antoinette, and the less said about that, the better. But this one looked like sort of a return to form for her. And I was a little bit disappointed. It, I, especially in the beginning, I was just kind of thinking, okay, where on earth is this going? It's the story of a movie star who has his 11-year-old daughter, who, with whom he hasn't had a real relationship, sort of dumped on him by the child's mother. And it's about how their relationship develops over the course of a few days. And I'm, I wound up thinking it was just okay. It wasn't, it certainly wasn't bad, but given what I was expecting, especially considering it won the best picture at the Venice International Film Festival and you have all these people on the back saying that it's magical and uh, perfect, one of the year's best pictures, all that. Um, I would say if you don't believe the hype and you don't go in with a lot of expectations, you'll probably wind up enjoying it. And now these are from the regular collection of the Hopkins University Library. First up is Map of the Sounds of Tokyo. This is the new film from Isabelle Quaxe, a, I believe, Canadian film director. And my track record with Quaxe has been sort of mixed. I really was not crazy about her film My Life Without Me, even though it had Sarah Polly in it, whom I really like. But then she did Elegy, which I thought was quite good. Although, I don't know. I didn't like the ending, but that it was based on a Philip Roth novel, and that was clearly like a Philip Roth ending. It wasn't Quaxe's fault. But overall, I thought Elegy was a really good film. And so I decided to give this one a try. And I quite liked it. It's the story of a contract killer who falls in love with her target, basically. That's the basic plot. But it reminded me quite a bit of the films of Wong Kar Wai, especially some of his later, more dreamy films about tragic and often doomed love stories, like In the Mood for Love, 2046, and a little bit My Blueberry Nights. And, but it also has kind of the action-packed story or plot elements of some of his earlier films like Chunking Express, but the overall mood was much more meditative. So I would recommend this one, I quite liked it. And then I have not seen the rest of these from Hopkins yet. This is Bulgarian Lovers, a Spanish romantic comedy that involves a bisexual love triangle and some stolen uranium, so I'm not sure, I don't think you can go wrong with that. And then I got The Tenth Victim, a classic, I believe, 60s, I want to say, I don't know, I'm pretty sure it's 60s, um, Italian science fiction film starring Marcello Mastroianni and Ursula Andress, and it's the, it's the kind of plot that's really been, I guess, done before to some extent in films like The Most Dangerous Game and The Naked Prey, and then certainly done afterwards with films like Death Race 2000 and Series 7 about uh, this uh, game show or contest where the competitors all have to try to kill each other. And I haven't, as I said, I haven't seen this yet, but I believe that Mastroianni's and Andres' characters are facing off against each other, but they fall in love and what's going to happen. And I just really like Marcello Mastroianni, so I kind of had to give this a try. And my last from Hopkins, I got season one of the television show Weeds. And as always, my pet peeve with Hopkins is that they do this weird thing where they put all the DVDs in one case and then you don't have an interesting cover, but oh well. 
Weeds is about a suburban housewife whose husband dies and she decides to go into the drug dealing business in order to maintain the lifestyle to which she's become accustomed. And I haven't watched any of these yet. It seems like the kind of show I would wind up either really loving or really hating, so we shall see. And then from University of Baltimore, I got this double feature of Midnight Movies, Invisible Invaders and Journey to the Seventh Planet. Now I've actually already seen Invisible Invaders, and as I recall, I thought it was pretty decent. It's one of those films that for some reason my video guides, um, Video Hound and Leonard Malton, had both panned, but that I really thought was pretty good. And I have not yet seen Journey to the Seventh Planet, but I love all these hokey older science fiction and horror movies, so I'm really looking forward to it. And then I have something new. I don't believe I've ever featured anything from the University of Baltimore Diversity Office in one of my halls before because they had relocated and they were closed for a long time, but they're finally having their grand reopening and the Diversity Office has a few or a, a fairly small selection of films. So from them I got Just Right. This is a romantic comedy about a physical therapist or, or sports therapist who falls in love with her client, a basketball player, and the various travails that I assume go into their eventually getting together. I haven't seen the film yet. But um, it looks like a pleasant enough romantic comedy and I was really intrigued that it is rated PG. And when is the last time you saw any adult themed film that was rated PG? I'm sort of intrigued by that. And then from Stevenson University Library, I got this film, Delicatessen. It's about a bunch of cannibals in post-apocalyptic Paris, um, highly recommended by some usually pretty reliable sources, but I just honestly was not into it. And then from the Enoch Pratt Free Library Sights and Sounds Department, I got this film, Wilbur Wants to Kill Himself. And this was just kind of a stupid decision on my part all around. I got it originally because it was made by Lone Scherfig, who, or Scherfig, who was part of the Dogma 95 Film Collective. And I at first thought I hadn't seen anything of hers, and I thought, well, I'll give this a try. And then I realized the reason her name sounded so familiar was not only because she was part of Dogma 95, but because she had directed an education which was probably one of the most disappointing films I've seen recently. I saw it because it had Peter Sarsgaard in it, who I think, I just think he's a great actor. I think he's probably the best actor of his generation. Certainly the best American actor of his generation. And so I was really looking forward to finally seeing him in a starring role. And I just was so disappointed in that film. So I wound up not having super high hopes going into this, and I gave up about halfway in. I just it was trying so hard to be quirky, it really didn't appeal to me much at all. So, But, last but not least, I can finally end on a high note because I got The Thief of Baghdad. This is the silent version from 1924, starring Douglas Fairbanks Sr. and directed by Raoul Walsh. And I just absolutely love this film. It's a great adventure story has moments of humor and really fantastic special effects, especially when you consider when it was made. And um, just honest, if you um, have any kids that you need to entertain, I think it would even be a great family film. And I also highly recommend the 1940 version, which is a talkie directed by Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger. And that one is maybe just a little more appealing to kids because the plot is actually quite different between, or not quite different, but fairly different between the two. But anyway, Thief of Baghdad, silent version or talky version, highly recommended. And if you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me for my next video.